good intro. Hi. Uh, okay. Oh, it's a long talk. You guys know that Black Mirror episode where they have the ratings? It's my favorite episode. Uh, and you know, that woman starts off with a very high rating and watches her rating plummet. And at the end, she has the one star and she's in jail and she's just screaming and she feels so liberated. This is what I feel the world's like right now. You know? Like, like the GPTs have made it so obvious that it's all bullshit. All of the niceties and language and all of the, oh, yes, I'm going to write a four-paragraph email to express a two-sentence idea. Is it over? Is the professional managerial class over? I heard the Barbie movie described last night as post-woke, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, okay. My talk is called Three Stories, and we have three stories, one about the past, one about the future, and one about the present. Uh, so we will jump right into the first story about the past with the Cruise Automation. Um, so Cruise Automation, most people don't know this, right? Most people see the weird orange hat branding today and like, look, we're building cars that are symmetrical. I don't even get it. But uh, you know, Kyle was actually uh, first building the Cruise RP1 Highway Autopilot for $10,000. Uh, and it sat on top of your car like that, assuming your car was an Audi A4. Uh, and it worked on the highway uh, to drive. Um, so Lex was guest 14. Uh, Kyle was guest 14 on Lex. And he gave up due to the technical challenge. Um, he didn't give up because it was a bad idea. It's actually the right idea. He, he gave up because it was too hard. And he had three concrete complaints about why it was too hard. One is that there's a long tail of cars. Right, so uh, they built it for the Audi A4. We're like, okay, we can make it work on the Audi S4, maybe the A6, and you realize that almost no one drives Audis. Right? We started with an Acura. Look, I made the same mistake. Um, and it turns out there's this absurdly long tail of cars. Uh, so how do you deal with this? Well, you just do it. It's not that much work. Come as a 20-person company, and we just did it, thanks to you know, contributors. Thank you, contributors, but like, it's doable. Right? You just do it. OK, cool. Oh, but, but, but how do you handle failures? What if a car has a sensor that fails, or a GPS that fails, or a camera that fails, or a steering wheel thing that fails, steering wheel actuator? Uh, OK, you just do it. Um, OpenPilot has a great error detection and handling system, the alerts. Uh, Alex Roy drove in a car with a comma 1. And this is what he praised. He's like, wow, this thing actually like communicates with you. Um, so hopefully you guys have experienced that using OpenPilot. Like, it actually, you know, gives you errors that tell you what's going on. And then we track all of these on a back-end dashboard, and we drive them down to zero. Um, so again, you just have to do it. Uh, it's different in one version of the car. What if the car manufacturer updates the firmware? OK. You do it. Fingerprinting. Yeah. We'll read all the firmware versions. We'll figure out which ones matter. We'll figure out which ones don't. We'll do this at scale. Right? These things are engineering challenges. But you can't fake any of them either. When you ship a product to people, you can't fake any of this stuff. Right? You guys probably mostly have OpenPilot. You guys probably mostly have Comma 3s. And it works in your car. And it handles failures. It deals with all the different versions of the car. You just have to do it. Comma was not supposed to exist. There is no sane reason that this company should exist. The second round, when we raised from Andreessen Horowitz, <laughs> I pitched him a crypto coin. Hey, look, man. You want to hear I'll, I'm telling you what you want to hear, man. I'll tell you what you want to hear. I know they're bullshit, but you, know, you want to hear it. Fine, I'll, I'll tell you that. I know enough about crypto to make it sound convincing. Um, our third round, we raised from uh, much more aligned investors. Uh, look, and it's not that even that Andreessen Horowitz is bad. It's just that, like, again, you have to think about what these people are optimizing for and what time horizon they're thinking on. Usually very short time horizons. Um, so, but then again, you ask yourself, what's 
what's worth doing in the world? You guys know this scene from Back to the Future too? If you're not building a company that looks like that line, what are you doing with your life, right? If, if, if the only thing that's going to be different, if you succeed with your company, this is to everyone in the audience, everyone out there watching, if the only thing that's going to be different is that the pile of money is in your entry in the SQL database instead of somebody else's, why are you doing this? Bro, it doesn't matter. Just update the SQL database. It's a lot easier. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, build companies that look like that. Companies that are going to change the future. Not change the distribution of wealth in the future. Right? I'm not doing this to like, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. This is a story about the past. So here we are. Six generations of the hardware. Zero, Eon, Neo, whatever. You play with the letters a bit. Comma two, comma three. I love when hardware companies just do that. Just make the number bigger every time so you know. Right? It's easy. Um, yeah. That's it. 250 plus cars. Uh, every major brand, except for the flex ones. Mercedes, BMW, no. But otherwise, with Ford, that's all of them. 25 employees, uh, and open source. All right. So uh, I think it's pretty easy from this to tell that all three of those numbers are going to go up, begrudgingly on the third one, very happily on the uh, first two. Um, and open source will stay. Uh, keep. You want hardware to be good? Look at an iPhone, right? This is iPhone 13. You know why it's good? Because they built like 13 other ones. They built even more. Right? That's how you make something good. You just keep doing it. You just iterate it. Ship it, you iterate on it. Uh, you want to support more cars? Okay. Make sure you don't have regressions. Well, we'll, we'll get there. I mean, how, 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 do we, how do we do this, right? Let's start with something like, like that one, right? Did you hear Helion Energy is going to ship a fusion power to the grid by 2028? Did you hear Cruise is going to have a billion dollars in revenue by 2025? Like, can I bet against these things? It's fake. I hope that everything you saw here today, you got like a real sense of honesty. And part of the reason you get honesty here, is because we don't have communications people. What are communications people in a company besides paid liars? Right? What, what, is the job of a, what is the job of a press secretary? Oh, oh okay, you, you, you murdered 30 orphans in Cuba. Uh, I make it look good though, make it look good, right? No, like, it's just honesty. And it's honesty because lying, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. You know? That's, that's, that's a good quote, right? Um, shipping. You got to ship. Shipping keeps you honest. Right? You ship stuff. You send it out to people. And they'll tell you about whether it's crap or not. You know how they'll tell you? You know, there's two types of ways to measure people's preferences. There's stated preference and revealed preference. Right? Stated preference is things people say they want. Like... Well, wouldn't it be nice if we had cars where we could share the car so we could uh, save the environment? And then you look at the HOV lanes on highways and the usage of Uber pool, and you're like, wait a second. No, 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 no. Everyone wants their own car, right? <laughs> revealed preference beats stated preference. So how do we measure revealed preference? We sell something profitably and then see who buys it, right? So shipping. Iteration. Uh, you know how you build something good? You build it bad three other times. Right? And that one's still not that good. You know, that one is bad after you get to the one that's built three times later. And there's no way around this. The only thing you can control is your iteration speed. Right? How quickly can you iterate? How quickly can you come out with new versions? How can you reduce the REPL time? But you have to iterate. Um, and then the last one is humility. Oh, oh yeah, you know, I, this guy used to call me ego hot. You know, it's kind of funny, right? I do have a big ego. I think I'm better than a lot of people. I mean, that's a true fact. Right? I think I'm better than a lot of people. Now, look, 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 you may disagree with me about that fact, and I'm open to having a conversation about it. I'm open to, you know, what do you want to, what do you want to, what, what, what shall we challenge each other at, right? But that's not what humility means, right? That's like, like acting. Humility is saying, okay, there's an actual problem. How are we going to solve it, right? Like, it's humility not as some status game, but humility in the real face of nature. How do you solve these problems? Well, you have to have humility. You know, it turns out you think, you think, oh, well, I'll train the machine learning model and it'll work. You know, I thought this. It's a comma. I'm like, 
well, I'll put in the, I'll put in the output path and I'll put the image in and it'll work. This turns out to not work at all. Um, you can look up behavioral cloning or imitation learning for why it doesn't work. And you just gotta have humility, you know what I mean? Like nature, nature, nature doesn't care. Nature doesn't care, you know? And it's humility versus nature, not humility versus people. Uh, so yeah, you know, you got some, you got some values of a company, right? Um, all right. So why haven't we won? Doing everything right, right? We can talk about what I'm doing wrong, talk about what we're doing wrong, but why haven't we won? Um, and the, the truth is things take a long time, even accounting for things taking a long time. This is not the first Comic-Con. This will not be the last Comic-Con. Right? Humans live a long time. You know, this is something that a lot of people forget about in the world today. Like, a lot of people are so like, man, how can I get rich quick? How can I pull this scam? How can I ship fusion power to the grid by 2020? Bro, you can't even ship fission power to the grid by 2028. <sighs> you know? Um, so, you know, I'm gonna, look, I'm, I'm 33. I'm gonna be here for a while. All right, so you start thinking about that. I'm not trying to get rich, I'm not trying to retire. There is no exit. There's no exit, okay? You know that books are no, no this is no exit. This, this is it. This is it. Hell is other people, right? Like, like th there is no well. We're going to get to this point and then we're going to stop. No, the system is going to get better and the system is going to get relentlessly better, right? This is Comic Con too. Let's we'll see. This is about the past. No. Uh, <laughs> think about it like climbing out of a well. Um, so let's, you know, put it, yeah, it's all self-driving, right? How long is it going to take to solve self-driving? No idea. But as long as every day you make forward progress, as long as every day you make a few steps climbing to get out of the well, and as long as at night you don't slide backwards, as long as you follow that algorithm, you are eventually going to get out of the well. Right? Avoid regressions and make slow and continuous improvement. This is how you make things good. It's like climbing out of a well. There's not another way to do it. No, but you don't understand. We're going to get a huge cash infusion. And it's get... No. It's not going to get you out of the well, man. What are you going to do? You've got a number in a SQL database, right? Um, it turns out these companies are scams, right? <laughs> well, it's Aurora, Too Simple, Luminar. They all raised way more money than Comma did. Which? Uh, well, none of these are fusion. These are all... Self-driving cars and LiDAR, but okay, so it's a question, right? What does it mean for something to be a scam? Does something to be a scam require awareness on the part of the creator that it's a scam, right? If the answer to that is no, if you believe that intention matters, then what you're going to get is honest idiots to raise billions of dollars, right? They're being honest, but they are idiots, right? This was obvious to me. I've been saying this exact same thing now for seven years. I could have told you. I did tell you. But don't listen, right? You know, people also thought that BitConnect and Luna weren't scams. Right? There's people honestly out there who shilled me both of those products. Right? And now, I mean, look, both of their founders are in jail. So, you know, we can all, like, there's a spectrum of scams, right? But, um, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll get to Cruise and Waymo later. Marginal utility approaches marginal costs. This is a true theorem of economics. And what is the marginal cost of OpenPilot? What's the marginal cost of OpenPilot? Zero, right? So if OpenPilot provides any utility at all, marginal utility approaches marginal costs. A lot of times you don't want to measure success in value creation, because a lot of value creation is a scam. Look at GDP. You kind of want to measure success in value destruction. If you can destroy fake moats of companies, OpenPilot will continue to get better. OpenPilot will solve self-driving cars, and OpenPilot will be free. <laughs> Did you know Linux is the fastest growing platform on Azure? And Satya is a smart guy. Embrace, right? Embrace. The car companies that are smart will embrace. The car companies that are not smart will ship you the Sun Cloud or the Oracle Cloud or whatever cloud, you know. Oracle still exists. I don't know how they make money, but whatever. Um, Linux is the fastest growing platform in Azure. Uh, markets do approach rationality. You just have to survive. Market can remain you know, irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Uh, yeah. This is a lifetime revenue comma. See a nice, uh, a nice R of like that, something? 
Uh, this is the amount these companies have made in lifetime revenue versus the amount they've raised. Uh, no, like, I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Maybe I didn't go to Harvard and get an MBA or something. But like, bro, well, okay, look, man, look, man, we, 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 we raised, we raised $3,700 million and we made two hundred. dollars Okay, that's cool, man. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, like, I, I, who, who, I'm not even saying, like, okay, obviously when you first raise for a company, this is true. But these aren't recent raises. Like, these companies have raised after. They were not even remotely close to making back their initial investment in revenue, not profit, revenue, right? You can look at other companies like Amazon and Uber and be like, well, I mean, Uber's hilariously unprofitable, but they make a lot of revenue. They have a lot of users. These companies don't. Uh, so this is the number for comma. Uh, 22.2 on 18.1 million rest. There's Twitter followers for, all right. I told you I'd address Cruz and Waymo, right? So I actually do honestly believe that Cruz and Waymo have larger marketing budgets than the operating budget of Kama. Right? And uh, oh, soon, man, soon. All right, look, they use a linear model, but like this is what the website said, so. <laughs> uh, uh, employee retention, uh, four people have ever quit over seven years. Uh, so it turns out honesty is, is a great draw. Uh, same mission focus governance, a commitment to iteration and improvement. I'll come work here. Uh, look, all this stuff, everything about Opa, I didn't do any of it. I haven't, I haven't pushed a commit to open pilot in two years. It's everyone else you saw talk here today. You know, it's not me. Um, my sole job is to keep idiots far away. Right, that's, really, that's really my only job. Right? Like it, it turns out, yeah. <laughs> I promise the other parts are more upbeat. The past is always depressing, you know? But the, uh, uh, no, seriously. Um, to anyone watching this, to anyone in the audience, uh, if you want to come work here, look, the bar is really high. But what we ship, hopefully, is really good, and you'll get to ship things. Right? You'll get to ship things. You'll get to be a part of this process that makes things better in the world. And I think that's the real thing, especially as we approach this, like, everyone late stage capitalism, everyone kind of understands the economies, whatever, man. Fugazi, right? Uh, I think the thing that people really want is that. They want to make the world a better place. And like I said, if your startup looks like this, you know, you're just changing the distribution. But if your startup looks like this, you're changing the world. I did not realize I was entering such a dishonest game. I have never seen a more wretched hive of scum and villainy uh, than I have in the business world. Uh, but, you know, we're going to win anyway. Uh, just takes a lot more out of you than you think it's going to. Okay. The future. I'm excited about the future. I really am. Uh, so we'll start with a nice quote from uh, Eliezer Yudkowsky. Now I'll plug in the numbers for the current computing speeds, the current doubling time, and an estimate for the raw processing power of the human brain, and the numbers match in 2021. Interesting. Not like, that far off. I think we have a little bit of still work to do on the software, but like everyone kind of sees it, right? Like, this is a lot easier. I've been, I've been talking about this stuff. Man, when I read, when I first, I read this quote when I was 15. It's changed my life. My whole life, my entire life trajectory has pretty much been because of, you know, this guy and this document. I'm sure he incredibly disavows it right now. We've got to nuke the data centers. Don't forget. But, um, no, really. Uh, yeah. So what, what is the future? I'm going to tell a little story, and my story is called Forward-Looking Statement. Thanks so much time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Comic-Con 9. It is the year 2037. I am an AI-generated voice. Hiring real people to do PAs became way too expensive in the early 30s. Um, we've grown quite a bit since the first Comic-Con in 2021. Uh, we have 44 stores and malls around the world. And a billion devices sold. 
Uh, in the top 10 biggest consumer electronics companies, and we did it without selling out. Um, so let's look at a picture of a mall. This is a real mall. You guys should all check it out while you're here. It's, it's up in La Jolla. Uh, it's called the UTC Mall. Uh, and I'm serious about the mall store. Like, like it's written on our boards inside. Like, come on. Isn't this where you want to buy a common three? Isn't this where you want to buy a common body? You know, like, come buy the mall store. No, the metaverse is lame. It's going to be a real mall store. Go get a Cinnabon. No, no one has Cinnabon anymore. Get a bubble tea. Happy lemon. Um, so we're going we're gonna to have a store in the mall. Uh, yeah. What's going to happen? The mall store is real. Uh, it's hard to go anywhere without finding a comma. Remember, it's 2037. And it's three form factors, cars, bodies, and puppies. It is versatile enough for everything. You'll find commas transporting goods, cleaning houses, cooking meals, and just being a lovable companion that will go anywhere with you. It's not render. Uh, yeah. Now announcing the comma seven. Just two, 20 that many dollars. They have to be 20, 23 dollars. Look, I don't control the inflation. Uh, it's a third generation comma ASIC. Uh, 50 pops of compute, that's 50,000 tera ups. Uh, for reference, the comma three has about five. All right, so we're off by a factor of 10,000. Don't worry, don't worry. The future comes fast, slowly and then quickly. Um, it's the first common device to boot into TinyGrad. Well, no, really. Like, look at OpenPilot, right? right? Like, OpenPilot is kind of this. OpenPilot right now kind of means two things, right? It's kind of both this system layer and the self-drive layer, right? The self-drive layer is a policy model for driving on, on roads. The system layer is like a camera daemon. Maybe we'll even start to move things like the vision model into the system layer, right? But you have this system layer in OpenPilot, which runs foundation models, right? And then you have, on top of that, a policy model, which does driving. And then underneath that, you have TinyGrad. You have an operating system, which can run all these models and schedule them appropriately. 50 pops is a magical number. Combined with the latest version of OpenPilot, our foundation models learned in the cloud, RL in the world, and a good amount of on-device learning, we expect a comma seven to be able to do anything a human can do. This does not stop at self-driving cars, OK? Level four, level five, this doesn't, like, this is boring. Oh, but, but oh, I heard the question before, not to call, not to, not to, not to pick on you. Like, oh, like, like, why don't you focus on, like, an application? Oh, my god. I'm trying to build people. We're trying to build people. That's what we're trying to build here, right? Self-driving is just a really cool, it's kind of a restrictive problem, right? You, you can refine your techniques in self-driving. It's like a game. But eventually, this all becomes general purpose, and sooner than you might think, right? I was, I was trolling, you know, when we did the Taco Bell challenge, I, 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 Elon replied to one of my things, and I was like, yo, our system's going to be so end-to-end -end that even our DM's going to be end-to-end. -end. You guys saw it. Uh, yeah. Anything a human can do is an interesting thing, too, right? So this is my 300. This is what we build the uh, comma threes on. You understand that it's being operated now by a comma seven, right? You understand that most of the employees in the company now are commas, right? It's interesting, right? I mean, how many of our, and you'll hear about this in a later talk today, how many of our workers, how many people worth of compute does comma have if you define a person as 20 petaflops? And you'll get an answer to that later today, right? How many, how many silicon people work at the company? I'm not, here to, I'm, not, I'm not here to discriminate, man. I'm a progressive. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it was crazy. When we first saw a comma seven actually come over and like help build the other comma sevens, it was, it was, it was a wild time. Uh... Your comma seven is yours, just like your comma three is yours. The models we train in the cloud are foundation models. Meaning they do not have opinions. They're not RLHF'd. They are true foundation models. And I want to give a thank you. Even though I lost $80,000 in your stock and really regret selling it, I want to give a thank you to Meta for releasing Llama 2 as the foundation model and not just as the RLHF version. We want to do the same. And I will.
Whatever it takes, there's no cause I believe in more than open source AI. Um, so the models we train in the cloud are foundation models. They do not have opinions. We do offer some pre-trained policy models. We call them custom software. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. All right? If you want a custom, if you want a pre-trained policy model that drives a car, again, how it drives a car is, 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 is a decision. Right? We make some decisions about how to drive, right? And that's, but that's, that's when you get into opinions, right? Foundation models are unsupervised trained. Policy models are trained supervised uh, in some way, shape, or form with some RL, with some supervised, with whatever. Uh, but by default, the uh, comma seven is like a child. It will learn whatever behaviors you teach it. So teach it well. And it should pick up skills as quickly as a smart human. What's that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what's next. The comma eight will likely be running the company. Let's look at it for a minute, right? It's got two eyes. It's got a mouth. It breathes air. It has two ears. I've pushed hard to keep those two ears. It has a spinal cord. See the spinal cord? I mean, yeah, all right, look, it's a comma three. It's got, it's got, it looks like a little bird brain, right? It looks like one of them dumb dinosaurs, you know? Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Robotics is all a question of intelligence. Right. Turned out, how many of you guys have robot vacuums? They're pretty good now, right? But how many of them eat quartz? Right. Why do they eat quartz? Because well, they're not smart enough to really understand. And like, the common three is about the same intelligence as a bee. Right. It's not as smart as a mouse, never mind a dog or a human. But we'll get there. Robotics, and that's like, humans are so good at like moving. We are so dexterous with our hands. People forget like how good humans are. People forget how good humans are at driving. They have all this self-driving rhetoric. Oh, the cars are going to be safer. And I haven't seen a car that's anywhere near as safe. Right? Now, ADAS systems can make it safer because ADAS systems, you pay attention at all times. And I do believe that ADAS systems make it safer. But a system that completely takes control away from the human, you're forgetting how good humans are. Humans are really good. And humans are good because they're intelligent. And they're intelligent. Robotics is all a question of time. But now back to the present. It's 2023, and you are Comic Con 2. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out. Uh, I, hope, I hope the things you saw today were good. Uh, Mall store. All right, come on, I really, I really went off in the weeds of the future there, but the mall store is going to happen soon, right? The mall store is going to happen soon? All right, all right, I love it. All right, uh, and the present, uh, yeah. The present clip art. All right, um, I'm going to sit here for a minute so we can all decompress a little about the future uh, because we're, we're really about to undergo a major tone shift in the presentation. The next slide is a, is a major tone shift from this hypothetical future where robots are replacing, uh, coexisting with humans. Uh, so major tone shift coming, and I'm just sitting down to prepare all of you, and now I'll go back to the presentation. All right, so we're going to start with some context. These are the failure rates of iPhones. All right, whenever we discuss failure rates, nobody is really going to, Apple is never going to put failure rates on their website or in any of their marketing presentations, but I understand this is very important to a lot of you that buy the hardware. It's very important to me as well. Um, so to calibrate, uh, iPhone 6s were the worst and had a failure rate of about 26%, uh, whereas you got down to like iPhone Xs, iPhone 8 Plus, and they were like 3%, right? So the range for iPhone failures is 3% to 26%. And these are the real numbers, right? Um, I could do it for game consoles too, but I like this chart for iPhones. Uh, so this was the failure rate of the Comet 2. Uh, yeah. Uh, these are just real numbers. You know, like I said, we, we don't hire any marketing or communications people, so we don't have any people to make up fake statistics to lie to you. I just actually took these screenshots from our real... Okay, how good is the hardware building? Uh, the Comet 2 failed a lot. Uh, you know, look, we honored the one-year warranty. Spent a lot of money. Uh, honoring that one-year warranty. Uh, and one of the biggest priorities for the Comet 3 was this cannot happen again. 
we are going to make these devices good. We did a lot better with Gum3. Uh, so you see orders of magnitude, we've shipped about 7,000, 6,000. We did a lot better with the failure rate on the three. And the, the real story is even better than what that shows. Um, so this is the common three failure rates by month. And you can see a jump discontinuity right here. It has nothing to do with one year or anything like that. It has to do, and that's when we moved to our new office. We built a real production facility for these things. People think that this is easy. People think building like high-end hardware like this is easy. Go buy an owl cam and you'll see that it has a crappy little screen and it's in this like overly dense plastic. It doesn't look like a sexy piece of modern consumer electronics. And it's because it's hard. Right? For however good you might think our software is or however bad you might think our software is, our hardware is pretty much the same. Right? Same processes, same ways of thinking about things. Um, but we've put tons of effort into making this a lot better. So you can see the failure rates of modern Comma 3s are a lot closer to 5% uh, than they are to 9 and we are going to do even better. We uh, dropped the price $500 uh, in January. You can see we 2 extra sales, which is nice. Uh, we do need a bit of growth. Uh, so you don't want too much growth, right? We're not going to do, we don't need to reach the whole world. So this isn't for the whole world. But we do want to make a product that is a bit more mass market. It's quite a bit more mass market. So where do we go from here? Refine them. The Comma 3 is great, but what do we do to refine it? Introduce them. The Comma 3X. So it looks pretty much the same from the front. Uh, see, the IR LEDs are a little different. This, the case is so much better on the 3X. Like when we did the three, it was the first thing we injection molded, and it was bad. Shiny black plastic, you know, Igor's in the garage trying to sandblast these things in our old office. Oh, come on, like they look bad, we gotta make up. It's stunning this time. Um, and you see the down curves there? The road cameras are on the board. We'll get to some pictures of the board in a minute. I check time. Count or somewhere? 3X specs. Okay, Comma 3X. It's the same 845 platform and camera arrangement as the 3. So what this means is your 3 will not become obsolete. Um, the 3 and the 3X are in the same cohort, meaning like the software is very close to interchangeable between them, more similar to how like the Eon and the Eon Gold were in the same cohort. Right? Like everything about the Eon and the Eon Gold were, were similar enough that we could keep the software supported at the same time. So we're not, we're, the 3 and the 3X have pretty much the same support window. Um, again, no promises on this, but uh, yeah. Uh, we upgraded the cameras, three OX Omnivision sensors. Uh, these sensors are a newer generation. They have 20 more dB of HDR. They have a faster rolling shutter. Uh, they can operate at real 60 FPS if we wanted them to. Uh, yeah. Uh, some of the late model Comma 3s have this too. So if you bought a Comma 3 in the last couple months, you have that. Uh, 128 gigabytes of storage versus 64 gigabytes. Uh, so I put that star there because we're going to start measuring our gigabytes the same way phones do. Some is taken up by the operating system and the software, but the real flash on the device is 128 gigabytes. Uh, so double the storage. Uh, can FD integrate it? Yeah. I, I know this is the one people are waiting for. This is the one people are asking about in Discord. Uh, so, so, so it has an integrated Red Panda. Um, same OLED, uh, same spec OLED. Uh, in the last five years, the Chinese got good at making OLEDs, uh, which is great. So the Comma 3 used a Samsung OLED. It was really hard to get. The supplier was, for anyone who had a screen problem with the Comma 3, they weren't all, I don't even think all the panels were new. Some of the wrinkled ribbon cables came wrinkly and we did a lot of filtering on them and it cost us a lot of money. Now we have a new supplier of the panels. We put in an order for a lot of them. And when you put in orders for lots of stuff, you get quality. Um, so yeah, all new panels, uh, same OLED, looks great. 
Uh, onboard road cameras versus flaky ribbon cables. If any of you guys saw camera CRC error or camera malfunction, uh, the cameras are on the board now. And actually, the CRC errors weren't even caused by the ribbon cables. They were caused by bad assembly procedures, uh, which we fixed. And if we have time, I can go into more details on that. Uh, stereo in case sound. If you guys saw the Hubble Sphere video when the Comet 3 came out playing those sounds, it was bad. Uh, those mono speakers, it wasn't well coupled to the case. Now we designed something with two speakers that are like coupled to the case. It uses gaskets. It's nice. Um, the sound is good. Uh, upgraded power architecture. How many of you had to wait for like super caps to flakily drain on the three? And they would like kind of half drain. It's because the super caps were connected directly to the power rail. Now we have a boost regulator in between the super caps and the power rail, which lets us get more capacity out of them and never has this weird thing where you're putting seven volts into the comma. Uh, yeah. And about half the components. It's a lot more reliable. Let's take a look at the board. This is the front. The front looks pretty similar to the three. A uh, few things to note. No more GPS connector, because it's using the GPS that's built into the Quectel. Uh, those little antennas are actually better than the big antennas on the three. Uh, you can see the pads for the speakers. You can see those connectors up in the corner. Oh, laser pointer. This is not a laser pointer. This is a laser pointer? Yeah. Uh, so you can see these connectors up here. They're uh, the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi antennas on the board. Uh, yeah, these LTE antennas are smaller and better. Those are where the super caps go. They weren't soldered in for this picture. Same two microphones. Uh, Fan, the GPS is using from the Quectel. We managed to get raw GPS out of the Quectel. Uh, the quality is the same. Uh, I mean, it's the limit of the antenna. Uh, yeah, same song. Where things really get good is on the back. Uh, I don't know if you've seen a picture of the, uh, of the Comma 3 back of the circuit board. I will show one in the next slide. Uh, here you have the Red Panda integrated in this tiny little chiplet. Uh, screen connects here, power stuff all underneath here to reduce noise. GPS is, actually the GPS is better in this one than the last one. I think we got like 2 dB of noise lower uh, by shielding things and just doing a better job with the, with the power architecture. Uh, battery, you guys don't care about this, but it slides in and out so we don't have to hand solder it. Uh, we have, to support CanFD, we have chokes on all the can lines. Uh, you know, like, I paid three dollars for this, so I hope someone appreciates it. Um, <laughs> uh, these are the Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, we got a SIM card. Uh, we tried with eSIM. Adib will uh, talk to you about eSIMs if you want, if you want to know why we have eSIMs. But oh, and then I guess the main thing I really missed here is that the cameras are right on the board. Uh, so the cameras are just, just on the board. And part of the reason we can do this, and almost no one does this, cell phones don't do this, um, is because we have, uh, we have a lens focusing line in-house. Right? We, can, we can put the cameras on the boards and focus the lenses, and we don't have to do modules. Right? Less ribbon cables, less noise, more reliability. Right? This is how you make things really, really good. I want the, reliability, I want the failure rate of this device to be like 1% or 2%. And by the end, I think we're going to get there. Uh, so this is the Comet 3 board compared to the uh, 3X. Right? Uh, which one of these do you think is going to break? <laughs> right? Um, yeah. This is actually from, we, I couldn't find this picture. This is a screenshot of the last YouTube, so it's extra bad quality. Uh, we got rid of the NVMe. It just uses the onboard, onboard flash now. Uh, again, it's enough. Uh, if you want more by Prime, uh, we store it for you in the cloud. Or you can set up your own cloud server if you want to do that. Whatever. Uh, QR codes on the board. We like track everything through this manufacturing line. Um, it, it even looks reliable. Is it a dev kit? I was on, I guess, on my latent space. Like, the guys were like, comma, it didn't ship anything because of some, like, spat with the government or something. And I'm like, what, what, this is like, what year is it? Like, we've had plenty of interactions with NISHTA since. They were fine. If we report our accidents to Nishta, like it's, it's fine. It had nothing to do with that. The only reason we called it a dev kit was to kind of set expectations. I mean, I don't know. 
I think it's probably time we stop using that word. So it's just the comma 3x. Mass market. I'm going to sell a lot of these. I think this is it. I mean, I think this is the one, right? Like, it's not, it's, well, I guess you haven't gotten to really why it's mass market yet. Well, that's on the next slide. All right. So the comma 2 is 1099. With inflation. So what should we price it at? Three dollars, three fifty, twelve fifty. No additions, just twelve fifty. You know, something I realized doing this. This is what my seventh of these now. Uh, is that you? Uh, you always get so caught up in your head with all these like, oh, we're going to name it the panda, the pigeon, the giraffe. Oh, man, there's additions. Why does the storage matter? Does the one terabyte drive better? What does cross country mean? You know what? Guys, you hopefully you'll read the questions document. Uh, there's a great document about questions. I hate questions. I hate when people ask. No, you guys can ask questions. It's cool. You guys paid to be here. You pay, you can ask questions. Um, no, but like people ask questions. And you know how you get rid of questions? You just like, well, what does the one edition do? Said no one ever, right? If you give them three editions, they'll think they have like a choice, right? And it's just, it's not even like worth it. Like it's just like, it's $12.50, you can buy it. And I called it three stories because there's a line. In uh, houses, three stories. You know how you know this one's good? Because the last one was good. It's just the comma three, but better. Everything about it is better. And it's cheaper. Uh, so when can you get one? Order right now. Uh, ships in one to two weeks. One to eight weeks. One to eight weeks. Uh, one to eight weeks. Eight uh, depending on when you order. If you order right now, you get the one. If you order on Tuesday, you get the four. If you order on next Wednesday after, like way after the Tuesday, you get the eight. So, you know, order now. Uh, we have a pool in the office and I want to win. So I bet a high number. So, you know, I don't want to. No, they're, they're, they're really good. Um, this is, this is the, the 3X and A in an EV6. Uh, no more red panda, no more two harnesses. Just buy the little thing, stick it on the, it's, you know. You just, you just look, look, we're not on the 13th generation yet. But if you handed an iPhone 13 to somebody in like 2007, like when did the iPhones get good? You know, what generation, around what number iPhone did they start getting like, wow, okay, this is just actually, what? Four, five, four, five, by the way, is not the fourth or fifth. You know, they did, they did three, three, three GS, four, four S. I, I hope we're kind of there, right? I hope we're kind of the point where, like, this one's good. Um, yeah. That's my presentation. Um, I also want to, you know, I didn't build this. I didn't build the software. I didn't build these models. I didn't build the hardware. The team did. Uh, and you can be one of those team. Apply for a job, too. Apply for a job by a common 3X. You know, it's a calls to action. Uh, no, the, I mean, the, well, you know what? Judge the team after buying a device and driving with it. That's fair. If it's good... I didn't do it. If it's bad, I did it. So. <laughs> the comma 3x is live on comma.ai. Yeah. And now we're going to take some questions. Hello. Thank you for presentation and, uh, and congratulations with 3x. Do you see any value to run language models right on device? Uh, why do you want to run a language model? Like interaction with uh, 
environment with uh, driver? Uh, yeah, sure. Check it out. It runs TinyGrad. It's pretty good. I don't know. Our mission is to solve self-driving cars while delivering shipful intermediaries. Maybe solve robotics while delivering shipful intermediaries. If language models help us do that, we'll do it. Otherwise, I don't see a reason to. But uh, yeah, no, I think you can totally get like llamas and stuff to run. I mean, not 7B, but like little llamas. Uh, great, great presentation. Uh, I'm not a developer. Uh, I'm a, actually a marketing guy, so technically I'm a professional liar. Uh, I mean, would you, wait, 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 would you disagree <laughs> with that characterization? No, no, no. This is what we do. Uh, so, Nothing personal, I mean. So I got some uh, just uh, silly questions here. So have you done uh, any testing or planning to do any testing on commercial vehicles like uh, ATN wheelers and things like that? I don't and, know, uh, just why? Why? We've done a lot of testing. This is the best tested comma device by far. Are we, how many people we get in that pot? A whole bunch of people have been driving around with these. We've made like 82 of them. This is the best tested one by far. Um, the, the, the amount of, I mean, we control so much of the stack now too. We, we're, we're, you'll hear about this in our next talk, but like we built out a, a, a manufacturing line and we tested them well. Have I done any testing in 18 wheelers? I don't have an 18 wheeler. I don't have, a, I don't have, a, I have a motorcycle license. I don't have a CDL. Tesla partnered with Pepsi? How, who's making money off this? Who's, who's this delivering value to? Like, I don't get it. Is this like someone wants, it's not self-driving. What do you mean? You've got a driver in the seat. This just sounds expensive. Sorry, just, just one more question. So, uh, you know, marketing is branding and telling a good story. Uh, Jobs sold good stories. Uh, Elon sold good stories until he bought Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so, other than honesty, what is the story about OpenPilot that the common person, not developers, uh, need to know about or want to be part of. I, I mean, and this is what I mean about kind of the lying. And again, like what, where, where I'm attacking this is like, what is OpenPilot? Well, OpenPilot is a open source ADAS system. What is the Comet 3X? It's hardware that's capable of running OpenPilot. So you ask the question, what does the user need to know? Just those two things. And you can buy them in our store for 1250 right? If there's anything that's like the narrative, I mean, it's exactly what I said. It's like, you see, you want, here, I'll show you the narrative. I'll show you the narrative in two words. Buy now. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? If you don't like it, here's another part of the narrative. 30 day money back guarantee. <laughs> Buy it, try it. Ships in one day weeks. Hey, hey George, uh, talk to us about how the comma 3X will always be compatible with the cars we drive and that the cars we drive won't somehow disable the use of the comma 3X. Don't scan, don't let Sam Altman scan your eyeballs, okay? As long as you don't do that, I think you'll be good. I don't know, what are they gonna do? They're gonna update the car? This has never happened like before. Maybe they're gonna, I don't think so. I don't know, I can't promise you that. I don't know, man, probably not. I've never seen it happen, you know what I mean? Uh, hey there, I was one of your hackathon contestants um, looking for my next hackathon project. I was curious, is it possible for a comma three to port a new model to a comma three? It's pretty easy. I mean, it's tiny grad now, so you don't have to deal with SMPE. You can just, the Onyx com support is pretty complete in tiny grad. Uh, yeah, you can run whatever you want. Is it possible? Sure. It doesn't say dev kit anymore, but it's still a dev kit. Shh. No, it's not a dev kit. Don't worry, buy it. If you're worried about that word, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, but no, you can totally run other models on it. It's not that hard. I don't know, like, again, like, are we going to do it? No, but you can do it. I mean, I think we ran some. I think we've got, like, a YOLO running for the body demo or something. Yeah, runs at 20 FPS. Runs at 20 FPS. We've got YOLO running at 20 FPS. We can put boxes around things, right? We love boxes. Okay, you're talking a lot about uh, mass market, right? So, yeah. Uh, but... I only have a C2, so forgive me if this doesn't work this way on C3, but like, you get the device, you turn it on, you still have to like, download the software, right? Have you ever bought like a PS4 and had to sit there while it updates for an hour? It's faster than that, don't Well, so the question is... Is the like, PS4 mass market? But basically, this is like a tiny liability air gap, right? How do you feel like this liability like, is going to be serving you in the future? 
Like that, that, Who that said protection. anything about liability? It's custom software. I explained to you what it was. It has nothing to do with liability and everything to do with the fact that our models are RLHF'd, right? right? And if it's RLHF, that's a policy model. That's custom software. The foundation models will come on the device, right? The foundation models, TinyGrad, Agnos, that comes on the device, right? That's what the device is. The software, the policy model that sits on top of it, that's custom software. So in general, liability, you're not concerned as far as like future... What do you mean liability? NHTSA stuff, like any of that. I mean liability. I mean, pay attention at all times. It's level two. Well, <laughs> like the one com com comment I'd say is like level three being shipped today. I'm not shipping level three. Whoa, I know, whoa, whoa, I know, I know. Level two. We but ship level two. Pay attention. Benz has come I'm out not and joking, said, like, by the way. We will cover the liability if our car crashes. I'm not crashes. covering shit. Look. Right. <laughs> Look. If you want to not pay attention. Do not buy our product. You must pay attention at all times. This is not a joke. This is not tongue in cheek. You must pay attention at all times. We put a lot of effort into making sure you pay attention at all times. Every accident I've ever seen with the comma device, no one's died, no one's gotten seriously injured. But I've seen a few accidents and every single one of them would have prevent, been prevented if people were paying attention. Pay attention. This is not a joke. This is not tongue in cheek. Pay attention or don't buy the device. That said, if you want to pay attention, it's a great device. Yeah. Hi, great presentation. And now I, we saw a large foundation model work pretty well. Do you think in the future or near future, the only very uh, powerful hardware can power self-driving car, something like that? Yeah, um, so it's a question. Uh, so the Comma 3 and the Comma 3X have an expansion port. They have a USB-C expansion port that can do full USB-C bandwidth. So we are capable of full streaming out the full sensorium of the device. Um, if it does turn out, we do need to run larger models, which we haven't seen better results with yet. Um, our recommendation is going to be buy a gaming laptop, connect the gaming laptop, and put it under a seat. Um, no, and I mean it, because like, it's actually really hard to buy. NVIDIA is not going to sell you RTX does 30s, 60s. But you can go on Amazon, and for $8.99, you can buy an MSI plastic crap gaming laptop, stick it under a seat, and it'll run the model. And actually, I think we can make the experience of this quite good, because if it loses connection to the laptop, it can fall back to the model on device. Um, so with a lot of these things, yes, more compute helps, but model, like, you can do all sorts of things where you student teach your models to make it smaller. But are we going to need more compute in the future? Of course we are. Do we need more? Will more compute make the comma device drive better right now? No. Uh, yeah. Also, the other question is, do you have to, can you, can you do like student teacher to put a small model on the device that captures the policy really well? That's kind of where we're going right now. You'll hear more about this in our next talk. We're now training a driving simulator. Um, and this is using a, like an autoencoder to compress the video. And this is a big model. Um, so we're training a big foundation model, but we may not necessarily need to ship that to the device because what we need to ship to the device is a policy model. Um, but we have pathways. I don't know the exact answer. Are we going to need more compute than what's on a comma three? Yes. Are we going to need it in the next two years? Unclear. Probably not. Thanks. We've got a question upstairs. Hey, hey, George. Uh, thanks. Nice presentation. Uh, a few notes there. Uh, first, if you look at those failure rates uh, over time, I think there is like a spike uh, if you look at it in uh, like summer times, so which suggests uh, that uh, you know they might be failing uh, so little no, no, bit no, that more isn't, in the summer. That isn't when the <laughs> devices fail. That's when the device was built when it failed, right? Those failure rates are not. That's not the month the device failed. That's like uh -huh. when the. But device anyways, was there built. is some curious uh, like. Um, time dependence that you might look at. But, uh, but my main question is not about that, actually. Uh, it's a little bit to reiterate on, uh, I really like uh, uh, the effort you guys put into reliability of 3X. And I think it, it should be actually built uh, even more reliable than like a uh, normal car. Because like if you look at like human brain, it's built like with all like sorts of uh, protections around. And that should be probably should Common strive it, like it should like really build like a tank. So even in the event of collision, it can record stuff in like 
you know, like the last well, 50 so milliseconds. The comet, device, the comet device is not a safety device. It's not really a, we don't. No, use, no, but, but just. Uh, we don't use the word dash cam anymore, forward. right? Like our goal, again, we're a small company. And like I said, a lot of what my job is now is saying no to things, right? This is one of the last things I still do from the company. Like, can we build all these fancy features? No, we're not Tesla. Right? What we are trying to do is build the best possible highway and highway plus driving experience. And you can go on Reddit right now and see people comparing autopilot to open pilot. You go back three years, people would say they were similar. Now, almost all of them are like, look, it's cool what FSD and autopilot are doing, but day to day, open pilot is hands down better. Um, it was just a post on the Kamei subreddit where some guy's talking about he has two bolts, one with super cruise and one without. Yeah, night and day. This is by far the best ADAS system you can buy, and that's what we're focused on doing, right? We start focusing on other things, the ADAS system gets worse, right? Everyone, it's really easy to say yes to things, but it turns out it's saying no that makes things really great. Who has two bolts? Some guy on Reddit, I don't know, man. <laughs> I had an English teacher and he had two Nissan Cubes. It's like, that's my dad's. I'm like, the car changed color. He's like, no, that's my dad's Nissan Cube. And I'm like, okay, why you'd buy one Nissan Cube, you know? So all Nissan right. Cube? Thanks to all the people who bought Comma 3Xs already. Ooh. We're, we're blowing up, George. Your, your high number, make it hit. Yes. 555 in the first yeah, week's what I'm going for. Up there. Um, um, thank you. Look. This is the first comma device that I would recommend to like my friends. I'd be like, this, this one's actually. <laughs> what if I told my friends to buy an Eon and a giraffe and a panda? Like, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. They were all good, but some are better than others. This one's good. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>